subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Galaxy Note 8 11 months later video and why I'm upgrading to the Galaxy Note 9. Now let's begin by talking about my experience with the build quality of this phone. I have a few micro scratches on the back, mostly probably from placing it on a table when doing speed test comparisons and things of that nature. But I have dropped this phone without a case a couple of times and it survived both those times without any cracks to the glass. Now granted, I did not drop this phone on the corners or anything like that, so you don't see a spider web shatter here for the Note 8. I also have a self-inflicted wound here on the SIM card tray where I was putting in, you know, the needle to get that little uh, SIM card out because I constantly switch phones, so that's kind of self-inflicted. Over here, there's a slight scratch here on the fingerprint scanner. You can see right there, so it's not a perfect build quality, but it does have pretty good build quality. And after 11 months, I'd say this phone looks rather new, actually. It doesn't look like it was used that much at all. So thumbs up for the build quality on the Note 8. And if you're deciding to get one, it's got pretty good build quality. But that takes us on to design. Discussing design of the Galaxy Note 8, it's a very niche design. I mean, not everybody's going to want this super large phone, especially considering that Samsung has much more compact displays such as the Galaxy S8, the Galaxy S9, and this phone it was actually designed to be large, but you can see right here, the Samsung Galaxy S9, for example, is a much more compact feel. You can get a phone with a large screen like this and still have a comfortable feel in the hand, whereas with the Note 8, you're going to get something that's a little more uh, large and tall. But at the same time, I don't think the S Pen would be as enjoyable on a smaller canvas. The point of having such a large canvas is so you can do drawings and writings and things like that. And that's where the S Pen comes into handy, because if you're doing a Note for example, and you have all this canvas in real estate to go ahead and write on, that's gonna help you out tremendously. So you can see right here, you got your hand, you're gonna put your palm here and you're gonna say like Galaxy Note 8, and you could see having that room on this large display to go ahead and rest your palm is a benefit. So that's why this display I feel is so large and it's gonna to continue to be that way on the Galaxy Note 9. So discussing the display quality, we still haven't got onto a reason why I'm upgrading to the Note 9 and display quality is definitely not one of them. The display on this phone has been fantastic. You can change the resolution as you can do with any Samsung device here on the Note 8. If we go down into display settings, it is very packed with screen modes. A lot of Android phones do this now, but the Samsung was one of the first to do these kind of things where you can go ahead and change that. And you can change your screen resolution to Full HD plus WQHD. It doesn't have the highest pixels per inch or the highest resolution on any smartphone, but it's still top notch in its color reproduction. And the OLED panel that was put on the Note 8 is probably one of the best in the business in comparison to a lot of other smartphones. It just stands out. It looks like a sticker on the display it's really beautiful and even if you bought it now you're still getting one of the best displays on planet earth talking about the galaxy note 8 s pen i had the note 5 and the s pen on here was even better it felt better to write with it had more features and uh that's basically about it that's all i've really noticed it had more features and it felt better to write with it has a more the better tip on the on this pen as well but the pen is supposed to get improved even more with the galaxy note 9 which is another reason which it actually brings me on to my first reason why I'm upgrading is the improved Bluetooth S Pen. I would like to see what Samsung's gonna do next with this. As every iteration, it seems like they're getting better and better with the way this feels. The Galaxy Note 8, when I first started writing with it, it felt closer to a real pen than the Note 5 before, but the Note 5 was really good as well. But this is the first reason why I'm upgrading because there's gonna be a new and improved S Pen for the Galaxy Note 9. Now, moving on to software with the Note 9, this has been a mixed bag because there's been some updates that I haven't gotten, but I definitely got the major one, which was Android 8.0 Oreo. But what I mean I haven't gotten them is it, it's kind of, you know, drug on. And I have the unlocked model. And if you have an unlocked Galaxy Note 8, you're going to know that the software doesn't get updated quite as quick. They usually push it out to the carrier first, then the unlocked models come. So it took me a while to get Oreo. I did eventually review Oreo on the channel. Many people have watched that review. But Oreo really brought some good enhancements to the Note 8 and made it a faster phone it feels more fluid than it did on Android Nougat. Battery didn't really change too much, so Oreo was a nice update 
for the Galaxy Note 8. So we got one major one and it's been one year. So pretty good so far with the updates. Just they haven't come very fast, which I don't like. So that's one negative I've had with the Note 8. But other than that, at least having one update so far is a pretty good thing, especially considering that's a major update to Android 8.0 Oreo. We should see Android P come to the Note 8 as well. Discussing the performance of the Note 8, the way I could describe the performance in the past 11 months is it's been very fast considering it has six gigs of RAM, but that's a little bit too common sense. Like, of course, it's fast. It's got a Snapdragon 835, six gigs of RAM, duh. But what I want to describe here is that the Galaxy S9, for some reason, just feels a little more swifter. That's probably due to the 845, the way they optimized it. But the Note 8, I don't know what it is. It just never felt as fast as the S9 Plus, for example. And this is the second reason why I'm upgrading to the Galaxy Note 9, is I feel Samsung is really going to up the performance a little bit over the Note 8. But as far as lag goes, in the past 11 months, there hasn't been no lag. I mean, I could run multiple apps at a time, and they hold in the background. And this really future-proofed the Note 8 by putting putting that six gigabytes of RAM in this phone prior to the launch of the Galaxy S9 Plus, which adopted that six gigs of RAM as well. You could just run apps all day on here. There's no lag. There's just something about the animations and uh, the way it, you know, just opens things up that just doesn't feel quite as fast as what Samsung's offering on the S9 Plus, which I think they're going to bring, I know they're going to bring to the Note 9, which is a great reason to update to the Note 9 if you were interested. Moving on to the cameras with the Galaxy Note 8, they've been pretty great actually, and you could put the Google Pixel camera on here and get even better photos with this camera, but very solid camera. I did a full blown camera review on this when the phone first came out, like an all day real world, you know, tons of samples. If you want to check that out, link down below in the description area of this video. But as a dual camera, it has plenty of features. It doesn't have that gimmicky, you know, AR sticker thing. It's got pro mode, pa panorama shot, slow motion, hyperlapse food, virtual, and there's more. So this camera basically had all the tricks you needed in the book. I think the software, you know, I don't know why the timer is not here in the software. That's one gripe I have with it. It's going to be closer to the S9 Plus software when it does come out with the Note 9, but it's a pretty good one. And the front camera is also solid. Take a look at these samples I've taken over my experience using this phone and decide for yourself if this is still something you might be interested in. Moving on to the battery life with the Galaxy Note 8, this brings me on to the next reason why I'm upgrading to the Note 9. The battery is supposed to go to the similar, you know, Huawei style battery, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery coming to the Note 9. And this is an area where I've been disappointed with the Note 8 is the battery life. It's one of the worst of the flagships I've seen in the past year. The iPhone 10 seems to last longer sometimes. The Galaxy S9 Plus seems to last longer sometimes. And the iPhone 8 Plus definitely last longer in my experience than the Note 8, but that that's only happened lately after I've been using it a while. When I first got this phone, the battery was really good, but overall, it's not been horrible. You can get through a day, but it's not the type of phone that I feel like you can just keep using and using and using and it's just going to stay up there in the battery life. This one, I definitely had to charge, you know, more often than I would like. So battery life improvements are going to be large for the Note 9 and one of the main reasons I'm going to be upgrading. There's only one complaint when it comes to the call quality, not how it sounds when you're talking in this, but through the speaker. This is another reason why I'm upgrading to the Note 9 
is the audio quality through the speakerphone is not that loud. And if you cover it up, you know, you're not going to hear nothing. There's not dual speakers on this setup, but call quality was strong. Moving on to the actual audio quality of this phone, the speaker, while it's not tinny, it's not the loudest in the world either. So let's go ahead and go to my channel and play a quick video really quickly. You know what? Let's just play that S9 Plus review. I got a car. And So you can see it's definitely loud, but there it goes. It's gone. No Dolby on here. Nice headphone jack. Don't get me wrong. There's no quad DAC in here, though, like the LG's offering. But you do have a headphone jack. That's a good thing. And it comes with some pretty nice headphones in the box. But no, the Galaxy Note 9 is definitely going to improve when it comes to these speakers. So this are, there's some great upgrades that are coming to this Galaxy Note 8. That's it. That's my 11 months with the Galaxy Note 8. The reasons I'm upgrading are mostly the battery, the audio quality with the speakers, and also the cameras are going to get better. That's not a huge reason because this was pretty good cameras already. And the S Pen is going to be a nice improvement as well. But I got to say, over my past 11 months using it, you know, there was some gripes I had with this phone and I'm going to mention this before somebody calls me out that fingerprint hasn't really bothered me at all I got used to it the only thing that's bothered me is when I switch between different phones you know you got to remember where it's at so I just want to make sure I point that out as well before somebody calls me out on that one overall the note 8 has been darn near a perfect phone with a few little enhancements it needs and I think that the refinement of the note 9 is going to make that virtually like there's nothing really that you need to do to really improve the note 9 but Besides change of design to bring it to, you know, an all screen design like the Apple Find 10 is doing or like the future of the phones. The only that's the only gripe I think a lot of people are going to have with the Note 9 is that it's not going to have the ultra new all screen design. It's just going to be a super refined Note 8. But the Note 8 was so good that having a super refined Note 8 is going to be like almost the perfect Note. Anyway, that's it for me. What do you guys think? Are you getting a Galaxy Note 8? Because I do think it's still a great buy, especially considering it's dropped like half its price. You can get it for like 500 bucks now or you have one and you're thinking about upgrading did you have one and change phones it was too much for you too big let us know down below in the comment section of this video if you found this video helpful entertaining enjoying informing do me a favor click that like button for me and if you're new here consider subscribing for more